So, happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. What are you doing, Arch and Tony, on Easter and messing with this stuff? Well, it, um, the whole family's doing something. Alex went to the beach with his friends for spring break. Uh, Barrett's got a little gig that he's doing uh, where he plays at a church every Sunday. Allie's doing some stuff with her mom. Uh, my wife's going to see um, her dad. It's just a mess. <laughs> but anyway, so I got this uh, online friend here, uh, Brian, and he's building this barn, and he was uh, wanting some help with the trusses, and he wanted a gambrel truss, and I actually had drawn a... Let me pull that up right quick. Where's that truss? Yes. I had actually drawn, oh, don't freak out on me, this truss, just to give you an idea. And I'll show the difference here in a second. Because I'm going to actually draw another truss, a gambrel truss, uh, for this. And But for now, uh, I'll just show you what that might have been, what, what it could have looked like. That would be, this would be a cheaper truss, easier to build, and easier to install. But of course, a lot of people like the barn look. Now, one thing while I was talking earlier was I realized I gotta get this 24 inches on center, not 24 inches from the corner. So I gotta move this one back three quarters of an inch. You gotta remember when you're doing your layout that you want it 24 inches on center so that if you're putting sh uh, sheeting or even two before purlins or, or girts on the outside of this thing you'll want your studs to be laid out properly so that you can um, everything works out for you the links so now I'm just gonna go let's see I'm just gonna put a bunch of them in here 24 times what was it I'm just gonna say uh, not or 18 for now I just caught and all I did was copy. I knew I was gonna have one too many. That's no big deal. Just erase it. And then this one's gonna be hanging over. You see, yeah. This one I just have to move back. No biggie. Now that's your standard wall framing that I think he has. He told me they were I think he said the wall was like thirteen feet tall. And I think he did that by building up the plates uh, using maybe a 12 footer. I don't, I don't know for sure, but he's got some sort of stump, you know, some sort of grade beam uh, out of concrete. He's got piles and then an infill situation going on, but I'm just showing this as, you know, a solid foundation, which I think is better than a pole barn. I don't like putting the poles down in the ground, but um, this is a lot easier to control drainage really can't control drainage very well with a pole barn where you just got you know poles in the ground you it's easy for water to migrate into your barn that way if you don't have it perfectly graded around it but then he's got a treated plate he said on top of that and then a regular wall so for now I'm just going to show I'm not going to show uh, you know everything obviously I don't have time to this video would be, you know, three hours long, but um, that's just your two wall. I'm going to show, for now, I'm going to show these two walls on either side and then do the trusses. And then if I have enough time, if I feel like the video is not too long, I'm just going to make a group out of this wall and then I'm going to copy it. To the other side and these are two by sixes at 24 inches on the center I don't have my trusses got in a weird spot that's weird they're up in the air I must have <laughs> I must have grabbed them I must have moved them up accidentally anyway I'm just going to move them out of the way for now. I'll put them back here somewhere. So that would be the, the I guess I could go ahead and 
so it'd be easy enough to, to fix. Copy this wall. This is one thing about uh, SketchUp. You know, once you've got your components drawn, and you saw I started out with just a stud that I had drawn, and I've copied everything. I made the studs a component so that if I want to go back later and make them longer, I can change. That's the difference between a block or a group and a, and a component. So if I just wanted to go in here and I'm going to edit this group, and say I wanted, he, he said, no, my studs are really 14 feet long. I'll just go in here, and you'll see them all move. You see them all getting getting longer. And then I would just have to raise up the plates. And that's the uh, advantage of making something a component over just a group. Because if I had made all these individual groups, then I would have to go back and edit each one of them. Um, but for now, I think I locked, did I explode that group? What did I do? Oh, I'm still in that group. Okay, I got it. Okay, so I'm going to copy that wall. And I'm going to spin it around. Nine degrees and move it to there. And I'm going to see, I open up a whole can of worms. Now I've got to do editing. So I'll go all the way back to there. That this gives you an idea of how quick you can edit with SketchUp if you want to. I'm just going to delete these studs. And I'll move this stud back to where it belongs. Back to here. Oops, I missed it. I just want to make sure you got your little snapping points going right. Now, if I had built this, I would have and I'm sure he did. I know I think he told me he did. I would have um let me go in here and copy this and get it out of that group. I don't know how that group got so big. Oh, you know what? Can I I'm gonna I'm gonna explode these groups because I'm I think they have the trusses in the group. I accidentally got the trusses in there somehow. So anyway, um, now I don't have to worry about all that. But what you would do is your double top plate would then overlap this wall. And that's what makes it so strong. Your top plates would overlap. And you would nail down into that. And then this one, you would cut it long enough to... Um, overlap this wall. See now, now I've done got myself editing, <laughs> doing a lot of editing. And really I'm, I just wanted to do this video to make the trusses so let me, let me see if I can get this. I said 90 goobers here. Get this over there like that. And Oh, am I still recording? Yeah. Sometimes I'll get that black screen and I'm going to check to make sure. So, uh, what he's got on this front, I'm just going to draw this to here for now. What he's got on the front is a some sort of o opening. Well, I'm mad. Um, not really mad, but just mad. I spent an hour <laughs> drawing this thing and talking to you guys, and the view was stuck on. <laughs> Let me just show you. I drew the truss, I drew the whole truss, and this is what I was talking about. I don't know if it comes up in the video or not um, but 
Like here's one where I'm talking. You see the view is stuck on that. Okay, so this is what's cool about um, SketchUp is that um, I went to the 3D warehouse and found a speed square. Yeah, you see I'm so talking about, you. I'm already past that point. I'm, I was and I was getting ready to upload this to the 3D warehouse. I, I went through this whole thing in this video where I drew this truss and showed how I was drawing it. And I went to um, layout and dimensioned all of it. And my view was frozen. The stinking OBS, this open broadcaster software, was the desktop view was frozen on that view I showed you. So, oh, what a pain in the booty. So, I guess just let me show you how I did this right quick. I just drew the 26 foot 6, and I'll do this real quick. And then I drew the height 8 feet. And then I came over, <clears throat> I made this part of 412. Came down four, went back up. Then I extended that line. Look at my top view here. I extended that down. Then I came to the center of this side, went up, then went back down. And I'm just doing this roughly because I'm kind of mad at myself. Because I, I got that black screen. I don't know if you saw it. And I even said in the video, well, sometimes that messes, my, messes up my video. Right? And um, so I'm just going to do half of it. So then I, then I did this 3.5 for the top bottom cord. And I don't remember now. This is what's so frustrating about this. I don't remember what I said about this truss design. But I think... This is the most economical truss design. Right here, 12. Go down. Bring this on down. Delete. Delete all that stuff. That stuff. You see, so that's basically how I proceeded. You can see now, and then. Uh, what I did was I took a piece, uh, a cord, and went from there to there on each side. And that was basically how I arrived at this truss. I mean, I went through the whole thing. I mean, I went through, I copied them. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, I don't think you saw the part. Let's see. Am I still recording? This is very frustrating because I went through this whole thing of um, where's my layers I turn off the regular trusses this whole thing of explaining and building this regular house line truss here because it sits on top it's the end we call it we call it a house line truss because it's the last truss and it's flush with the end and the reason you build it differently is so that you can put plywood on it uh, your OSB or whatever, your sheeting, and it's not structural because it's not free spanning because it's sitting on top of this wall. This will have a structure here in the front too, I just don't know what he's doing. And then, and then I had these regular trusses um, on two foot center and they sit directly on top of the studs. This is the way you always want to do. You always want to stack your structural stuff like that. But what I'm going to do is, I'm not even sure if I explained that I had done this truss before. Get my top view again. I had designed this truss for just a gable truss, which would be the most affordable, simple to build, and uh, you know, cheap, easy to set. This truss is only like four and a half feet tall. You know, four foot eight. This one's going to be a little more difficult to set because it's eight feet tall 
So anyway, then from there, <laughs> am I still recording? <laughs> this is frustrating. I'll be honest with you. I spent all that time. It's like one. It's almost two o'clock here. I've been doing this. Anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's frustrating. I went into my software, which is called Layout, which is where you create your documents. You model in SketchUp, and then you dimension things and create documents. Um, like, you know, if I was doing this for a regular job, uh, a paid job, I would, you know, make title blocks, all that kind of stuff. Um, put my title block on the drawing, all this kind of stuff, right? Well, in here, um, I was trying to explain that these these angles are going to be relative to the um, axis that I'm working in in SketchUp. So um, it's hard to tell you what they are necessarily. And I'll go back really quick, make sure I'm still, and show you what I mean. Uh, is that like just this angle here? we know is not very steep, right? If you had this if you had this board laying on your sawhorse, you know it's not 108 degrees. Well, it is 108 degrees relative to the coordinate system I'm in now, but if you were to take your speed square and, and make this angle, see this line is square, that's your board squared off right there, you see? So, and if we move that to here, that's what we would be angling, that's what we would measure our angle to. Um, you see, that's only 18.4 degrees. Anyway, you see what I mean? So I was having trouble showing those angles as they are in real life. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll have this drawing, which has all the, the dimensions on it for each Board, you see these top, this top cord, seven foot eleven, you know, or seven foot one and eleven sixteenths. That's nine foot eleven. Now some of these may be, no, they're not too long. They're fine. Building this out of two by fours is going to be very economical. Now you could do it out of two by sixes, and all these dimensions will work, but it's just going to be a lot heavier truss and a lot more material. And since you've built this wall my perspective view. See, I had even set up all these views in, uh, I didn't, I was doing all this stuff and all that time, it wasn't recording. All I have is the audio part of it. The video part of it stuck or the screen capture part is stuck. But, um, since you're putting these trusses on two foot centers and they stack over these studs, you know, if this was a pole barn, it'd be a little bit different. But the more trusses you have, the least load each one of these is going to take. And that's why trusses are made out of, most trusses are made out of two befores. Because there's there's so many, if you if you took out every three or four of these, you know, if I made, if I, if I said, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to put them on four foot centers, then you might want to make them out of, Let's just delete every other. See, if you're going to do it that way, now each truss is carrying more load than it was before. <coughs> of course, then you would have to, you know, your per, you would have to have these girts going between those trusses. It gets complicated. Now, with, on two foot centers, you can either use OSB decking on this you know, 7 sixteenths, or you can run two by four purlins at two foot on center, or even 30 inch center if you're using like a 26 gauge galvanized metal, you know, for your roof, you can run those purlins going across this way on a um, 30, up to 30 inches apart. So, but what I'm gonna do, and I was in the process of doing this when I realized that, that, that the video had screwed up, but what I'm gonna do is share this on, um, Yes. Am I still logged in? Yeah, good. I'm going to make this public and I'm going to say this is a gambrel. I'm going to call it a barn with gambrel roof.
And then uh, provide the URL with more information about your model. Hmm. I'll put the, uh, maybe I can go back and put the video URL once I upload it. So now I'm going to upload. And we'll make sure I'm still recording. Yep. Success, your model has been uploaded. Please note that it can take a minute or so before your model appears. Okay. Let's go to. Um, I'll show you the online, the free online version of SketchUp. And. I'm just going to click on the main link because there should be, let's see, products, SketchUp free. If you go to products and go to, yeah, go to SketchUp and go to products, SketchUp free, and now you're going to go to the web browser. You're going to say start modeling. Okay. You're going to sign in. So what you'll do is you'll start SketchUp. Um, free and you'll just have to log in with your Google account if you don't have one just create create one but then in another tab go to 3dwarehouse.sketchup.com and you can type in barn uh, with uh, gambrel roof okay and where did it go? Here it is. I'm not sure why it didn't why it didn't show up. But anyway, you'll find it under barn with gambrel roof. And this is mainly for Brian. The other people can do this too if you want to. I'm just mainly trying to show Brian how he can do this. And here you're gonna simply just click download. And you're gonna wanna say, um, just pick that top one, SketchUp 2018, and you see your little thing will come up and you'll save as. Click on save as, save file, I'm sorry, save file. And then you'll just want to note where, where it saved it, which it should be in your downloads folder. Yeah, it's in your downloads folder, but you can check here in your on your like on Firefox you can check the, the, the place now you go back to your other tab which was your SketchUp free version which is the web browser and you just say open I'm sorry insert and then you'll click on your computer and then you'll go to your downloads and it should be right should be right if the, you might have to change the date here to make it come up the top right there barn so you're just going to download um, and just let it let it insert it as a component because then you can just um, explode it and there it is now then what you can do is um, Click on it and just say explode, and then all these pieces, it'll be back uh, into the little pieces. And down over here on your left, there's a there's a little orbit button here. So what you can do is go in, zoom right into the truss itself, and you see the <laughs> the um, the speed square I uh, um, put in there is still there. And then you can take your measuring tape little tool over here you see a little measuring tape and select that point to that point nine foot eleven and one sixteenth so you'll actually have the model in on, on your in your possession and you can just use this um, and you can make changes to it you know in in here I don't mind making changes if you want changes but I'm just showing you how you can do it and um, it can sort of become, you know, you can learn SketchUp at the same time. It's very simple. Here's your tools, your eraser, your paint brush, or your paint bucket, your push push pull tool. You'll use a lot. Um, 
you can just kind of play around with this but the main thing I'm trying to get you to see here is that if the drawing that I send you that's got the dimensions on it doesn't tell you enough you can go in and actually get it uh, off uh, SketchUp uh, 3D Warehouse. So this is a long drawn out uh, video, sorry. <laughs> I was just trying to show Brian an idea on how to do a, a gamble truss, how easy it could be. And um, uh, if you need more help, Brian, just let me know. Or if you want me to make these changes, I can email, I'll email you this layout drawing uh, that you can you know use for references and then if you wanted to you could go into this uh, free version of SketchUp and I'll put the links uh, to actually you know rotate it around see different views you know decide how you want to do things there so anyway thanks a lot guys I gotta get to doing some editing on this <laughs>